We're here in this incredible place, listening to this incredible sound of water and really thinking about right now how essential these types of corridors, habitats are for humans in the Southwest as well as all our wildlife. As we've learned more about a lot of our species, we've started to understand that animals move a lot more than we used to think that they do. And so it's not just enough to protect those strongholds, but to protect those linkages. A wildlife corridor is essentially wildlife habitat that is preferentially used by a lot of different animals, wildlife in their daily and seasonal movements to access water, food, mates, and to connect with other populations. Corridors are really important for wildlife because during certain parts of the year, animals need to access different things on the landscape. And so the ability to move around the landscape through corridors is really critical to the long-term persistence of wildlife populations. You use your hand to tell a story, you got your mountains. Then you come down to the valleys and you come into the deserts and you use your hands and you watch the rivers. Corridors connect each other. My perspective, it's where the animals meet and they talk. Yeah, I think a good metaphor for wildlife corridors is if you're, as a human, going to visit family members, for example, and you've got to get from your house to theirs, if you, every road you tried to go down, for example, was had a barricade on it for some reason, if it was flooded or the road had been tore up or there was a new building there and you couldn't go down that road, it's similar for wildlife. When they're trying to get from point A to point B to a critical resource, if we block all the ways to get from A to B, then a lot of times the end result is we end up losing those populations. For species like large game animals, they may traverse hundreds of miles in seasonal migrations, such as some of the big game migration corridors in Wyoming, to access food and summer or winter range for breeding or for winter forage. So we're talking different scales for different species. What we have on both sides of us is really, really critical winter habitat uh, for pronghorn antelope and bighorn sheep and elk and mule deer. They need this plateau for dependable grazing in the winter and just refugia in the winter time because obviously our northern winters are very hard. And So what happens on the mountains all around us, the majority of the elk and mule deer um, are up in the highlands. They've headed up in the highlands to, to drop their calves and, and fawns and, and fatten up over the summer. And then in the wintertime, they come out of the Ponderosas and spend uh, the wintertime out on the plateau. And you need really, really, really big, intact landscapes to make these herds robust. The river itself, obviously, is a really critical corridor for myriad waterfowl species and then also songbirds tend to follow river corridors because that's where the food is and that's where the cover is. So you're talking about hundreds if not thousands of species of, of songbirds and, and many, many species of waterfowl who've been using this route for millennia. Good morning, Viejo. My name is Cameron Martinez Nupapuin. That's my, my uh, given Indian name. And you're here on the Taos Pueblo Indian Nation here in northern New Mexico. And I am the director of natural resources for Taos Pueblo. Those uh, river otters uh, and beavers that occupy uh, those river corridors are very important, as well as the, uh, the water insects that occupy those river corridors. Very important to longevity and cleanliness of the, the stream 
We have such a diverse animal population of uh, insects, uh, which includes butterflies, also uh, uh, the birds, different birds that we have. They all are things that we make sure we perpetuate for, for future generations of our people and, and, and this, like I said, this world we live in. Wildlife corridors, particularly in New Mexico, span almost any jurisdiction you can imagine. Public lands, the state lands, the private lands, the Native American tribal lands, and it, it flows back and forth, those animals move back and forth without regard to the actual jurisdiction, but more in tune with the habitat that they need, whether it's forest, streams, grasslands, as they move back and forth. Almost half of the land in the western United States is in private ownership. So private lands play a key role in these migrations. Um, many people focus a lot on public lands and wildlife needs there, but most of the winter habitat, which is often the critical limiting factor on our wildlife populations, exists on private lands. So we, as conservationists, need to work across this spectrum of private, public, and tribal land to really work in a collaborative fashion to protect the landscape that these animals need to move through. So at the core of the question about why wildlife corridors matter is a question about what kind of relationship we as people want to have with all the species with whom we share these landscapes. This is particularly true in the West, where we still have this robust public land system where the wildlife of the West are such an integral part of who we are as people, as cultures. And the question here is what kind of relationship do we want to have with the land and with all the other species sharing these landscapes? And my hope would be that the future holds opportunity for us to make space, to conserve space, so that all the fish and wildlife with whom we share these places have the opportunity to thrive as much as we do.